actually drop all of these guys. They're not feeling so good. And we have more high temp iron. We see more shining storms coming down there. We see three and another one at four or five needles going down here. The uh, stalkers right there could have stayed in there, although the threat of the Zerglings making Sake feel not so confident about that. And we do actually see more Sonic Storms coming down there as we just see chunks and chunks of Mutilus fly from the sky to the ground. Meanwhile, they were doing a lot of damage to these stalkers. Stalkers have 1-1 one, one upgrades for damage and armor, and this Nexus does look like it's going to be compromised. Will Sake be able to get there in time? I do not know. As we see another Mutilus come down, and uh, falling out of the sky, of course, all these Zerglings will die to these uh, Stalkers, if they so choose. But being fast enough, three of these uh, Zerglings will be able to haul ass out of there. So the uh, the flock of, of Softball really not feeling so good. It's half and half now as he was uh, repopulating that flock. Let's go take a look at the units tab. Yes, we do have. He's back up to 25. And what was that? Oh, an Ultralisk Cavan coming down for Softball. So Softball engaging once again. So many Cyanide Stores coming down here. Softball trying to move out of the way. There are just not enough Stalkers to really deal with all these Mutilus Scores. We do have Archons coming down here. Another Cyanide Storm trying to uh, help keep the Archons alive. As one Archon will be coming out of there, getting a few pot shots off while it uh, does actually fall relatively quickly to these Mutilus. There's so many Mutilus right here. And. Uh, softball doing a good job of just harassing the living bejesus out of Sake. Sake, uh, kind of not necessarily on the back pedal, but he's really not in a good position. These Mutals does look like they are going to be able to snipe this Nexus, not liking the fact that that Stalker is shooting them in the rear. Yes, it does look like this Nexus will fall, so Sake going to be suffering a 400 mineral loss there for practically nothing. And as soon as that Ultralisk Cannon is done, we see two Ultralisks being spawned for Softball and Chitness Plating. And this Chitness Plating is going to make such a difference. Now, Sake, not aware of this right now, is going to have a hard time dealing with it because the Psy Storms really don't do a lot and these Zealots don't do a lot either. Meanwhile, we have these Zealots chasing in here, trying to uh, chase down these <laughs> those Zerglings. But of course, those Zerglings are going to leave them in the dust. Woo, excuse me. And we do have more High Templar warping in. For Sake, Sake going back to his uh, his build of Zealot High Templar. As as the two units really work out for each other, the High Templar are very Vespine intensive. Meanwhile, that leaves a lot of minerals left over for these uh, so these changelings, though just being dispatched left and right. And what do we have here for softball? We have the Adrenal Glands coming in here for the Zerglings. We have Melee Attack Level 2, Chitness Planning almost finishing up, and an Ultralisk are online. So we're going to see some Ultralisk on the field here going up against the uh, Zealot Heavy uh, Ball of Sake. And of course, there are a fair number of Stalkers in there while well, trying to give him some sort of anti-air. And of course, the High Templar in here are going to make a big difference. But we actually have Spike Crawler trying to run in here, trying to dig in. This is not where we want to be here for an engagement for Sake. We see a lot of Psyot Storms going down. And a lot of these uh, Stalkers are going to be jeopardized here, but those Sinus Storms did so much damage. That one High Templar has 18 kills, and uh, Sake needs to engage right here, although he will lose these forces. He's going to lose them anyway if he chooses to retreat. These Stalkers will will be able to outrun these Ultras, but not able to outrun these Mutilus as he Mutilus. He will be able to micro them down if he so chooses. No, never mind. He's going to blink, leaving those High Templar in the wind. So... Sake once again forced to retreat. We do see a Zergling come here trying to figure out what's going on. Meanwhile, Softball in the main of Sake tapping out, uh, just basically one-shotting that High Templar right there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the losses tab. As Sake once again, uh, throughout this entire tournament, I've seen Sake really not doing so good in the losses tab as he's losing more units or the value of his units are higher as far as losses go consistently than his enemy. Jinro, every single time, Jinro had fewer losses than him. And uh, against uh, a bunch of others, when we're seeing Sake go up against there, we've seen Sake with a lot of losses. And that's really unfortunate because Sake is a really good, really meticulous player, but um, just not having the best of luck, especially going up against this uh, Mutalist Ultralist uh, combination here. We do see one Mutalist go down to that Cyanus Storm. We see a lot of Ultralists here. Will it be enough? We do see Cyanus Storms going down on these Ultras, but of course these Ultras are just shrugging off. This one Immortal trying to run for its life. This Immortal will do so much damage to these Ultralists as it does 60 damage to armored creatures. Uh, especially since it does have level 2 weapons, which is going to pay off for him in the long run. But not to be outdone, Softball is going to be getting uh, melee weapons level 3, going to making these these uh, uh, Kaiser Blades so, 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 so awesome. But we do actually have an Archon in the Mineral Line, 
So this queen is going to be dispatched. Will the Archon be able to do anything? No, actually, the queen will be able to survive. A few uh, of those drones will be going down, but of course, in the end, the Archon does go down. As that's a pretty nice play. As I guess Saki was able to uh, throw down some psionic storms and then go ahead and throw it into a Archon as he knew there was going to be a reprisal attack. And the Warp Prism coming over, kind of making a small tour, trying to figure out what's going on. But of course, Sapa seeing that Warp Prism. It's going to be coming over here, and uh, so or Sake will be moving it around, trying to evade those ground forces. And meanwhile, Sake kind of playing around in the middle, but nothing uh, really decisive happening at this point as we see ground level, ground weapons level 3 going in here, being chrono boosted out for Sake. Uh, Sake only having one forge at this point, so I'm not really sure about that. Uh, as seeing as how how large this game, long how long this game has been going on, but we do see the ultras seeing this force will be moving into action as this nice. I really like the placement of these spine crawlers, allowing uh, softball free reign of his movement right there and not having to worry about defending each base individually. But we do see the ultra trying to come in here, trying to catch these uh, the units of Sake off foot. Sake looks like he's going to be coming over here, trying to. Uh, populate this expansion here, but this Zergling doing a good job of patrolling, making sure that Sake doesn't get the uh, expansion un unseen, you know, it's not going to be able to really get the Nexus, and then have it, having the uh, mineral line populated for about five minutes before he sees it. <laughs> Meanwhile, we have the uh, Ultras from Softball coming out of the bushes, that must be a very frightening sight because there is a whole herd of Ultras here, and we do see Silent Sword coming down on these Ultras, Ultras not really caring about it though, this Archon taking a couple of shots from the back. Archon trying to make something happen here. This Immortal, though, laying down a bunch of fires. We see three Immortals doing a lot of damage here, trying to let the Archons and Zealots stay up in the front as they DPS these Ultras. We do see one Ultras die there. These Stalkers, of course, not so well suited. We see exactly these Immortals uh, mopping up those Ultras, and almost all of, well, a lot of those kills are Ultraless. So these Immortals more than paying off for themselves, with these Ultras as well. Racking up some kills, we saw five kills from there, and I'm sure the ultras that did die right there were also had very veteran units. So, looking at the loss tab right now, uh, Sake kind of kind of making me eat my words right here, as he is really uh, caught up, and he is only 175 minerals behind right now. So, Sake doing a good job of countering the ultraless threat with the immortals, as the immortals are just so brutal against that. And keeping the High Templar in here, also using the Archons. The Archons are very good against the Mutalists as they do have an AoE attack. And the Mutalists do bunch up. So when you see the Mutalists coming there for that first round, although they might be able to one-shot something, that uh, that AoE effect is going to affect almost every single one of those Mutalists. So just making that attack that much more deadly and that much more brutal. But what is this? We have a Dark Shrine coming for Sake. So Sake looking to uh, switch it up a little bit with these permanently cloaked units, but I do want to know that Sake has populated this island base. Good call by him, on, in my opinion, as those Ultras will have a hard time harassing this base. Uh, it will require a Nidus Worm or an Overlord drop. But Sake really right now running off of a, a base and a half as this entire mineral line is just about mined out. Uh, meanwhile, Softball has the high yield has this expansion and has this expansion as well. So softball is macro stance is doing really well, but what is we actually have an overlord drop here. We have an ultra list. We have the stalkers trying to make something happen. We have the photon cannons and the DTs in here as we do see Cyanus storms coming down. A lot of DTs right here and the stalkers were trying to chase off these overlords, making sure that they cannot do anything else here. So the uh, mineral line took a lot of heat right there, but there are plenty of probes left to do some damage. We do see the DTs being ferried across over to the main line right here. These DTs will make a huge difference if we don't see Softball bring up an Overseer, which I don't actually think he has one. Let's see. Oh, he does have one Overseer, but he's going to have to do uh, do well with it and make sure that he uses it appropriately. We actually do see some forces of Sake coming up here, going up against Softball, but Softball has him way outmatched here as far as uh, army size. Maybe coming up there with the DTs would be good, getting off some free pot shots, but there is actually an Overseer. So that would not actually be advisable. We have the uh, DT of Sake moving over here, going to be taking a tour, and it does look like he's going to be slicing and dicing the murder line. Yes, every time he takes a hit, he is killing something there, and we just saw a couple of units die, uh, a couple of Sake units die there by uh, Softball. So eight, nine kills. 10 kills, yes, 10 kills 
Will he get another kill before he's dispatched? No, it looks like he's trying to run away from the vision. Softball not taking that. Uh, Fortnite, so will he? Oh, is he seen? No. Softball is able to see him. The Mutalist will be able to dispatch him, but he got 10 kills, and almost all of those were drone kills. So he's more than paying for himself. Softball not going to be outdone. Is going to be having an Overlord drop in the main of Sake, but Sake, of course, has a lot of cannons in the base. Will be warping in some units, some High Templar, and some Zealots in here. So more than enough to dispatch those, uh, <laughs> those Zerglings. But, of course, we did see one gateway fall, and we see all of these gateways being chrono-boosted. So... Sake looking to macro up, wanting to populate his army. Let's go take a look at the army tab as we do see a small advantage for sock or for softball. Uh, I wonder how much of that is actually uh, actually none of that is harvester count. Sake has more harvesters than than uh, softball does. As I do believe we actually saw softball getting up in the main over here, or not the main, but the ex uh, the expansion of softball here. So Sake doing a good job with those DTs, racking up those kills. And right now we are going to see, looks like, a clash as the expansion of Sake is being threatened. We do see a Fungal Growth going down, and these Immortals are locked in place. These Ultras are able to get to the Immortals, but these Immortals doing so much damage. Choose those armored units, just taking them out. All of these Immortals having multiple kills, seven kills, four kills, two kills. And these are all ballers, showing the truly impressive power of these Immortals. We're seeing four Archons on the field going to be doing some anti-air, and then of course we have a few DTs in there. And what is this? We have DTs in the base of Softball. Of course, this expansion is being evacuated as there is no sort of detection, so will these DTs be able to snipe this uh, hatchery? I do believe so, as they are doing 60 damage per hit. And boom, there we go. We do see it go down. Will they be able to get the Hydra List in, though? As the Brutalies will not be able to see anything what's going on. And we do actually see another DT down here going to be engaging this force. But the force was uh, actually ahead of the, o of the Overseer right here. But, of course, these DTs will go down very quickly as they are very weak when they are actually seen. But we have one Ninja Dark Templar not wanting to go down easily with eight kills as all those guys making a huge economic impact there, forcing Softball to evacuate his one base. Pretty much, I mean, we do actually have uh, some fire going down. Right here, we see Cyanic Storms going down. All these Zerglings melting underneath it. Of course, the Roach is able to shrug through it very well. We have a lot of mortals here. The mortals will be more than enough, I believe, if they'll actually engage the uh, Roaches. But they're not engaging the Roaches. They're engaging the Zerglings there. So there's an Immortal not able to DPS. We actually have Brood Lords. Oh, did not see that. Those Immortals were actually attacking those Brood Lords. If the Immortals had been able to go toe to toe with those Roaches, they would have been more than enough to kill them. But we actually have Brood Lords on the field for softball. And these guys are very expensive, but very deadly. As we don't really have much anti air that would be effective. Because, I mean, we could see the Psionic Swarms going down on the Brood Lords, but the Brood Lords have a lot of health, so they would be able to shrug off a lot of that, as we do see them attacking, killing High Templar, killing a lot of this, so the Stalkers are going to be forced to blink up in there and focus fire down there, and we do see a lot of Psionic Swarms going down on the Brood Lords and on the Zerglings, although the Zerglings are not feeling so great, but there's so many of them, it doesn't matter, as these Archons are doing as much as they can, 22 kills, 25 kills, these Archons are badass, 